In this video, I'll show you how to set up Unified Drive with Apple's Time Machine on your Mac so that you can have hourly backups of your entire Mac like I have here. And let's say you had something in the downloads folder like I did, maybe the file is corrupted. I can just jump back in time, find the file I need and restore it just like that. My name is Bogdan Schperning and I run Apex One IT. We do networking and security and IT consulting. Okay, so there's a couple of things we need to do. First, we're going to configure Unified Drive to use Time Machine. And then on the Mac itself, we need to set up Time Machine. So first let's enable Time Machine in Unified Drive. So there's a couple of ways to get there, but you can just go from your regular Unified dashboard, unified.ui.com and access your Drive app. Now you'll see under file services in your main view that I do already have SMB and Time Machine enabled. And you do need to have both of those enabled, but just go to settings here, services, and you'll want to make sure you have Time Machine right here checkmarked. And if you can't checkmark it, it's probably because you don't have SMB enabled. So enable that and then at the bottom click apply changes. Then we want to create a separate shared folder for Time Machine. Now you don't have to do this. You can use, you know, people's personal drives here, right? right? Each user has a personal drive and there's a example shared drive, but it's not ideal because if you do just use a personal drive, it looks something like this where your personal files are in here. And then you also have this, that right there, this image bundle thing, that's Time Machine's file that it uses. Okay, so it's just not great to have it there. That's why I recommend creating a separate shared folder. So go here at the top, add shared drive, and just name this Time Machine. And we can't have a space there, okay? We can enforce a storage limit here for how much it uses of the volume, but we can do this later in Apple's Time Machine settings for each device. So we'll do that there and users a bit later. Encryption, same thing. We can encrypt this on the Mac side. So let's just add the shared folder. Next, we need to decide who has access to this shared drive called Time Machine. By default, it has only one, which is if we go in here, settings, all admins. Okay, I'm the only admin. I have owner permissions, but I can add additional users. Now, if you're using this for home, let's say, you know, this is my wife's here. I can go ahead and select her and give her access. And you just need, you don't need owner for Time Machine, just editor. So for home use, that's probably the best way is that they can just access this. And with their own credentials, they set up, they can go ahead and, you know, back up their Mac to share Time Machine folder. But for business, it's best to create a different user, like a separate user just for Time Machine. So we can go here to settings, admins and users, and let's click create a new user. So not an admin, just a user. You can do something like time machine. No email is needed here. And we do want to enable file services and time machine credentials. Now we need to enter a username here uh, again. And it's a little bit different than the user here. This is kind of like your UI account if you had an email, right? And this is separate credentials to add the NAS to your Max Finder, for example. Okay, you will use these credentials for SMB or for Time Machine as well. So I'll go ahead and just use the same first name, last name, and then add a password here. Perfect, and we'll add the shared drives. We just need to be editor. I'm not sure why that didn't pop up. We don't need this one, just the Time Machine one. Okay, so I have my credentials, I have my user, let's click create. Now for Time Machine, you don't have to use Unified Identity. So let's skip that. One thing I want to point out here is that we go back to settings for this user. Just note that you can't, after you set this up, you can't change the username. You can reset the password, but you'll have to reconfigure everything basically to change the username for this user, okay? So just make sure you get that where you want it, but you can't change the password later. And we can also go back to all files here, our shared drive and just verify in settings that indeed who has access, all admins and our Time Machine user. All right, now on the Mac, just go to your system settings. You can search for Time Machine settings. You just don't open the Time Machine app itself. You just, get, you just go to the settings. So you can go general and we want to click add a backup disk. And we'll see a couple things. You'll see a personal drive. These are some other NAS here. We want our Time Machine drive right, right here. Now, sometimes right now it's not popping up actually, interesting, but there usually will be two instances of this time machine. One that says like this, like local IP address, like 10 dot whatever, 192 dot, something like that. And the other one will have the name of your machine. So UNAS pro dot local. 
you must select this one in order for this to work. You can't use the IP address, okay? So let's click Setup Disk. This is the credentials that we added, if you recall, for SMB for that time machine. So we had our username as time machine and then my password and connect. Here it is, so it's prompting, hey, do we want to encrypt this? Sure, if you do, there's another password. And then finally, disk usage limit, I would set one up. Okay, so by kind of default, or I don't know if it's a hard rule, it probably is here, because this is giving me a minimum, I have to use about 400 gigabytes allocated for time machine. And typically the rule is that you need to have like 2X the storage capacity of your Mac. So this is actually not quite 2X, my Mac is 250, I think. So ideally, I will set this to something like roughly, actually even below 500. And let's click done. Okay, so it's, it's getting ready to back up. We can actually just say right click, secondary click, and back up now. Now under options, this is just all related to Mac. I already set these up, but you can exclude certain destinations, locations from backing up. And I will probably turn off backup on battery power. And every hour obviously gives you kind of the most protection against any errors. Uh, but more realistically, I mean, it shouldn't be a lot. The first one's gonna take a while, but the additional backups don't back up your entire Mac every single time, just the changes and things like that. So it's very efficient. Again, first one will, t will take a while, depending, you know, it could be a couple hours. I should show you that an easy way to keep kind of tabs on what Time Machine is doing is go here to Control Center and actually show right here, Time Machine, show it in your menu bar. And from there, you can also jump into the actual time machine like I showed you in the beginning of the video, find your files and recover. Now I could go into Finder and I'll see that time machine file, the backup file, but you can't really do anything with it in Finder, okay? That's not what it's made for. In Finder, you can still use that connection as long as you have the right credentials and you can browse your other unified drive files. That's probably the best way to do that instead of going into the web browser. You have a lot more features here and by the way, you can do the same thing on your iPhone. You don't have to use the Unified Identity app. There's a built-in files app on your iPhone and you can view your Unified Drive files there and it's just a lot better integrated experience, I would say. You can watch this video up on the screen here where I walk you through how to set that up. So I'll see you there. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Take care.